what does Charleston mean for me or for Black Sheep? Um, very warm people in Charleston. Um, the way I usually describe it to people is some places as you go you can live for 10 years and you're still not from that place. Uh, if you live in Charleston for 10 weeks you're from West Virginia. And really just the just the fact that we make almost everything in house. I mean short of short of maybe sour cream, we pretty much make everything here in house. I, I guess that would that would be the, the biggest difference is that, you know, any traditional Mexican place you're eating traditional Mexican food. Here the uh, the taco or the burrito is really more the vessel for um, whatever kind of combinations we can come up with. Well my sister started this ten years ago with the idea of just being an independent pizza place. Uh, using locally sourced food. Um, and it's just kind of taken off in, the, in this area. We get a lot of you know, the same customers that come in you know, on a weekly basis. So it's, it's got a real community feel to it. We try to you know, be involved in the community as much as we can. Um, we just give back. You know, the, the Charleston's been really good to us. And we need to, you know, to give back to Charleston also. Um, Charleston's always had a place in her heart. And, She's always, you know, once she graduated, saw an opportunity to come back here. And, you know, it worked out well for her. I think she just always had a desire to come back and, you know, raise her family in Charleston. And it's a great place to, to live and, and raise a family. You know, if you need something, somebody's always going to help you. Yeah. I love this neighborhood. Um, a lot of um, people live here. And this is nice area, uh, no crime, so uh, I love to um, open in here. And basically also uh, because this area a lot of uh, chains restaurant, so we love to open something that not chains restaurant in this kind of city. Basically, um, people coming here the one uh, love quality food, love ambience. I love a uh, big city uh, feeling. We do restaurant week every Monday and Tuesday. Also, we do uh, one testing menu every month, that, which is uh, five courses with five different wine. Obviously, like the biggest thing with Fayetteville, with being right on the rim of the New River Gorge, is you know an outdoor adventure town. Um, but what has come along with that, you know, when you have tourists and people coming into town that are you know exercising, they want to eat. So we have become a dining destination. Uh, Secret Sandwich started out um, kind of with the building, uh, with the way our building is set up. It kind of thought of started out as a, a speakeasy type of thing. Um, then we kind of moved towards the secret societies and uh, then we realized that maybe some secret societies we didn't want to be associated with. So that's how we kind of moved towards the presidents because the presidents have a lot of secrets um, and you know they are also members of some secret societies. Um, so yeah, all of our sandwiches are named for presidents, all our burgers are secret service code names for presidents, and our sandwiches are named after first ladies. We really pay attention to our quality of food and our service. We approach sandwiches with uh, you know kind of a white tablecloth forever. We um, deliver West Virginia southern, southern regionally inspired dishes made from whole humble ingredients, um, not pre-packaged. So we make as much as we can in-house. We source as much locally as we can. So we are starting small, um, but currently our eggs are sourced locally, our breakfast Sausage comes from Cardinal Island Farms um, in Fayette County, and um, we have local producers bringing food in that we feature in specials. We kind of built Vandal's Kitchen. We wanted to have a hub um, in Fayetteville for the community, and so um, we feature local art, local artisan products.
Well, the Stash is just a fun little store where you can come in and grab a quick lunch. Uh, Fayetteville has a lot of awesome places to eat. We try to be the quickest and the cheapest and still be tasty. We also do ice cream and uh, shakes and malts and smoothies and then we have candy and toys. I mean, we try to have the whole, a little bit of everything for everybody in this little shop. That's what this place meant to me is somewhere for, um, for everybody to come and just have a smile and have a treat. Best donut shop in Parkersburg, <laughs> and and the West we won the West Virginia, the best donut shop in West Virginia. We make thousands of pepperoni rolls. I mean, it's, they're great. And donut wise, we we're not slacking on them either. We've got 300 300 dozen per day. a family is uh, goes back over 200 years in the mid-Ohio Valley. Came to this area in 1798, bought the upper half of what is now Blennerhassett Island and established their home here. The mansion was constructed 1800. The Blennerhassett Island State Park, we've been in operation now since 1980 as a historic park. Things in the area, we have the uh, Blennerhassett Hotel, schools, just a lot of people have used that Blennerhassett name here in the area to keep it going on for many, many, many years. The Blunder House Hotel kind of reached out to me, had an executive chef position open, and I thought it would be a great opportunity for me to grow and uh, bring some of the stuff I've learned in the cities I've worked in to Parkersburg, West Virginia. What I'm going to do is I'm going to cook a uh, filet mignon, which is kind of one of our most popular items here. I'm going to pair it with a mushroom risotto, uh, a little bit of bordelais sauce and some medley vegetables. As well, I'm going to do a Maryland style crab cake with a red pepper aioli and some roasted tricolor fingling potatoes and some medley vegetables. It was more of a family thing that kind of brought me to this area, which is kind of a nice little community, uh, kind of a nice little friendly city. Welcome out to live lunch right here at Point Park Marketplace in picturesque Parkersburg. It's been here since 1899 the oldest tavern in West Virginia. My favorite brew is the Rhodes Red. It's the Amber Ale. It's not too strong, but it's not too light, and it has a nice flavor to it, so I usually stick with the Rhodes Red, which is the most popular one. I think that one of the major reasons is that it is the oldest brewery in West Virginia, but at the same time, as a person, as an employee here, one of my favorite things about my job is that I see the same faces over and over again every day and I get to know people on a more personal level instead of it just being a, a job and going somewhere else. And I usually know them by their beers and their drinks and you know I get to know what's going on in their lives and that's my favorite part about it. nobody else quite like us. West Virginia is unique even in Appalachia. There's nobody else in Appalachia like West Virginia. We're not like Tennessee and we're not like North Carolina. We're not like Virginia. We're very different and I would like very much for the world to see that and the difference that there's that difference between Creole and Cajun and West Virginia is different than North Carolina. We're different than Asheville. We're different than Tennessee and Appalachia is different than anything else. I think it's uh, our time has come.
So uh, my, my business partner and I, Sam, wanted to open a place in downtown Morgantown and, and uh, restore a really historic space and build a social gathering spot that served uh, global cuisine and craft cocktails. So the, the craft cocktail scene hadn't really come to Morgantown. We wanted to have a place that had old fashioned bartending with really fresh ingredients and above all, uh, a really great social gathering spot for, for locals and young professionals. We are a college town and I, I went to West Virginia University and w we simply felt like, especially downtown, most of the entertainment services, whether it's a restaurant or bar, are really geared toward, toward undergraduate college students. And we wanted to be one of a growing number of places that focused on maybe graduate and professional students and up. So locals and, and young professionals that, that want to try something that hasn't been available in our market before. Jefferson County as a whole, there the three major towns are Shepherdstown, Harpers Ferry, and Charlestown, um, and each one of those places is pretty rich in history. So there's a lot of history going on, and they're all very gorgeous towns. But I kind of think of Shepherdstown as like the cultural hub of the county. So in terms of not just dining, I think we've got close to 15 restaurants. Um, so a lot of options, everything from you know six dollar tacos to you know much finer dining, um, but also in terms of arts. So we've got quite a few venues for music. We have the Opera House. Um, of course, we have the university here. So we've got a lot more arts going on. It's, it's the only town that really has a nightlife. We have quite a few pubs and bars. Um, and we also have the Theater Festival, um, which is the Contemporary American Theater Festival, which takes place in July. And that's a huge draw for the town. It brings thousands of people every year, um, fills up the restaurants and the hotels. What makes Shepherdstown unique specifically is that there's a great sense of community here. And I think that people who live in Shepherdstown or who own businesses in Shepherdstown really love being in Shepherdstown. And I think that makes it somewhat unlike other small towns in the area. Um, there's really a great sense of pride in promoting this town. And I think it's kind of infectious. And we get people in the restaurant all the time who are just visiting and they instantly want to move here just because they're so enchanted by, you know, how unique and how, um, you know, just how charming Shepherdstown is. Um, and that's, you know, that's a really, that's a really cool thing to, to talk to people. I was burglarized and without fail, without any, you know, outcry from myself of need of help, the community came together and put a benefit on and raised the money that I had lost during that burglary. It that's that's community. That's working together and and benefiting ourselves to be a stronger human race. And to me, I feel like that's what the world needs more of, is your neighbor again, asking them for sugar and, and being able to talk to your neighbors and, and always being there to help your neighbor and for your neighbor to help you. And Shepherdstown is producing that. Shepherdstown produces a community that, again, is very, very hard to find um, in every small town or city um, that I have come across. There's been a few, and I've moved through many states, and there's been a few that I have found that work together like Shepherdstown does, and they're out there. Um, and those are the spots to start a small business.
about 15 years, so I know they are very well. Um, it's Lewisburg, I love Lewisburg, it's a cool town. I grew up in Virginia Beach originally, and uh, it's a hustle and bustle of the town, but you know, here it's nice and quiet and you get to know people, um, and it's you know, very quiet. It's great here, uh, you know, we have a beef bourguignon, um, you know, some nice, uh, you know, fish dishes and the bouillabaisse, which is kind of a fisherm fisherman's stew in a sense. Uh, it's kind of old school, but I, I enjoy cooking that and refining it to be a little bit more elegant as, as far as a plate presentation. Um, some of our ingredients, our produce especially, from local growers. And it's really nice to be in Lewisburg. Um, it sort of acts as a hub for Greenbrier County where um, a lot of people move through because we are close to the interstate. And so we get a lot of exposure not just for ourselves and our town and the shopping and dining here, but also for the local producers. We take care to make our food simply um, and also fresh. So our chef actually recommends that you put no more than two to three toppings on a pizza to keep it simple and to also bring out all of the flavors of the fresh ingredients that we have. We've been here about a year and a half and the reason I opened this coffee house is because I traveled extensively for a previous world life and we really didn't have anything like this here. Um, it's important. Our tagline is the science of coffee and the community of people and part of our mantra is definitely to have a place where people can gather and have a cup of coffee together. So why Huntington? Why not? Uh, we need to have um, more people like ourselves to invest back into the community and I think that we're seeing a, a movement of that um, and also a movement in coffee. So that's part of why we're here is to share our passion and education about coffee, the science of coffee. We just look for a way for the community to have a place to gather and a sense of belonging which I think is very important. We are a gourmet market and cafe. All of our sandwiches, everything that we can possibly get local from West Virginia, we do our very best to get. Everything here is made from scratch. It's the chef and the owner, Susan Ballard. It's all of her recipes. It's a common sandwich, and then we throw a little curve into it. That's kind of the bodega style. So you'll see like a ham Swiss bacon, but then we put apples and homemade fig jam on it. So we have over 170 craft beers and lots of wines. So that's kind of that's kind of our jam. That's what we do. Just something that's a little bit different for downtown Huntington. Me and my husband Drew own the restaurant together. Uh, we opened up back in 2012. Here at Backyard, we, um, we try to do everything from scratch. We source locally as much as possible with our produce. We do untraditional wood fire pizza, and we also cook with um, a wood fire grill. So it's like 90% wood fire cooking, which is really fun. We do our dough from scratch every day. What's another draw to our restaurant is we have a raw bar. We do like ahi tuna, people are really into that. Oysters on a half shell. Um, we're just, we're really passionate about the food and bringing something good to Huntington. We're both from here, so we have a lot of pride for the city. Really, there's a lot happening in Huntington right now as far as growth and businesses. A lot of new businesses are popping up. A lot of people want local, they want to eat local, drink local, buy local. So that's kind of fun to see that change. 